Good morning, all of you. In today's session, we are going to discuss about CSR NET GRF Chemical Science December 2016 Part C Series 3. So we will discuss about 10 questions in this series. Earlier, we completed June 2016, 2017, 18, 19, 20 question papers of all uh, chemical science of CSR NET GRS of uh, two sessions have been completed and they are available on the channel World of Competitive Chemistry. Right. Let us discuss about the series three of this question paper, where we are going to discuss about question, uh, what series three, and in this series three questions from 91 to 91 to 100 are going to be discussed, right? So all 10 questions we are going to discuss in detail. Let us discuss about question number 91. In the following redox reaction with an equilibrium constant K is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 8, ruthenium NH3 taken 6 whole plus 2 plus FeH2O taken 6 whole plus 3. So there is a uh, reversible reaction. When these two complexes got uh, mixed in each other, so what happened? There is a possibility of reversible reaction, right? So ruthenium NH3 taken 6 plus 3 plus FeH2O taken 6 plus 2. What kind of reaction is? It is the kind of electron transfer reaction. So there is a, a no change in ligands, no change in the metal, only the change in their oxidation state. That is nothing but electron transfer reaction. It is uh, in the self-exchange rate for oxidant and retard, 5.0. Uh, what mole inverse second inverse and 4.0 into 10 to the power 3 mole inverse second inverse respectively. The approximate rate constant in mole inverse second, in, second inverse for the reaction is right. So we are going to perform this reaction by combining this ruthenium iron complexes. What happens interchange in the electron from where to where electrons got transmitted initially ruthenium complex is in plus two state finally turned into plus three. Plus two into plus three is nothing but rise in the oxidation state by losing electron so that it participated in the loss of electron. Hence, we can say oxidation and iron plus three turned into plus two. So plus three to plus two decreasing the oxidation state by gaining electron. This is called a reduction, right? So hence, we can say this is a kind of redox reaction. Simultaneous oxidation reduction both are possible through the electron transfer from one complex to another. Here, uh, equilibrium constant is given. Oxidant rate, reductant rate, both are provided. We have to we have to determine approximate rate constant of combined reaction. For that purpose, here it is provided with K12 is equal to rate constant of two reactions is equal to K11, K22, K12, F12. So uh, what we have to, we have to take the product of all these. What is the uh, formula here? K12 is equal to approximate rate of the reaction is equal to K11, K12, K12 and uh, F12 can be taken. K11 denotes what rate constant of self-exchange reaction of one. So here two reactants are given, right? So for the reaction, one is denoted. K22 is denoted uh, with equilibrium constant for the given uh, cross section K12 is given with the rate of the reaction of second one. Second reactant is there, right? For that purpose, we will denote with the K12 again, right? F12 is nothing but constant for the given, given cross section area and whose value ranges from 0 0.85 to 1.00, right? So here, all get multiplied in such a manner. K12 is equal to phi, uh, phi is given for, phi is given for what oxidant? Phi is given for oxidant and for reductant it is given as 4 into 10 to the power 3. For reductant it is given as 4 into 10 to the power 3 into then uh, here equilibrium constant is given as 2 into 10 to the power 8. 2 into 10 to the power 8 and force constant is given as 1 and whole to the power half can be taken. This is the formula just we are seeing here to the power half is missing here. To the power half should be there. So then we are going to take the product of all these. It will become 4 into 10 to the power 12 whole to the power half. Okay. If we take half of all these integers, 4 becomes 2. Half of 4 is nothing but 2. 10 to the power 12, nothing but 10 to the power 6. Right. Rate constant to 
be measured in mole inverse second inverse so why this rate constant is given as 2.0 into 10 to the power 6 mole inverse second inverse right so that is provided in the option number 2 for question number 91 option number 2 is the correct answer this is a question from chemical kinetics so we predicted rate of the reaction that is 2 into 10 to the power 6 let us move on to question number 92 the correct statement for fisher carbene complex it is the part of inorganic chemistry fisher carbene complex sorry organic chemistry so fisher carbene complex should be predicted so here some of the specific um, important parameters which are pertaining to fisher carbene are so fisher carbene complex present in large to middle transition metal so this fisher carbene is stably bind with middle to large transition metals that is nothing but first series is smaller right so as we are descending what happens the size of the metal will be gradually increases 3d metal are smaller 4d and 5d metals are larger right so middle metals are nothing but 4d metals large metals are nothing but 5d metals so in that case fisher, fisher carbene is able to form a uh, stable complex and uh, fisher carbene always said to be an electron deficient and always works like a carbene uh, carbene is a electrophile electrophile is nothing but electron deficient in, in nature and having provision to bind with nucleophile either phenyl or any any heteroatom releasing electrons it able to suitably bind fisher carbene complex generally follow 18 electron rule why they follow 18 electron rule means there is a possibility of sigma donor and pi acceptor ligands are present. That means there is a dual nature. It used to release the electrons and pi acceptance also there, right? So two uh, electrons present on that, that used to release and one vacant orbital is there that used to accept the electron. Because of that nature always, fischer carbene complexes are used to obey 18 electron rule. And next is about fischer carbines or free carbines in singlet. Singlet is nothing but two electrons are present in one in clockwise in either in anti-clockwise manner, right? If two parallel spins are there, that is called a triplet. If uh, spin opposite, spin, uh, spin parity is there, that is said to be a singlet. So there is a possibility. So these Fisher carbines exist in spin singlet state. Ligand stabilizes the complex. So these ligands are able to stabilize the complex. Now let us see what are the statements which are correct with respect to uh, Fisher carbene complex. Fisher carbene complex electrophilic in nature. Correct. Carbene behaves like an electrophile and having tendency to bind with the nucleophilic metal. Right. So for question number 92, option number 1 is the correct answer. Let us move on to 93. Acidic solution containing trimethylamine, dimethylamine, and methylamine, pKa contains 9.8, 10.8, and 10.6 respectively. Okay. pKa is the measure of acidic strength. Greater the pKa value, lesser will be the acidic strength. Was loaded on the cation exchange column. The order of their elution with gradient increases. pH is uh, greater than 7. Then acidic solution. Three different uh, amines are provided. One is tertiary amine secondary amine, primary amines are given. So when we are taking these three different amines, these three different amines when taken, what is their elution? So when we are taking, uh, when we are taking column chromatography, so column chromatography is the vertical glass glorette can be taken and silica was taken as the mobile phase and we are going to pour uh, uh, what uh, mobile phase. Stationary phase is silica and through that going to pour uh, mobile phase solution along with the given compound based on their rate of adsorption different compounds can be separated right so in that case when we are taking the mixture of these three amines primary secondary and tertiary amine three get combined together and the, those are allowed to pour through that column so during that column running so what is their rate of elution which compound will be eluted first and what will be the second and what will be the least eluted compound that order we have to predict basically the uh, rate of elution of these compounds mainly depends upon their basic nature greater the basicity of the amine greater will be their rate of elution as already we know we are more familiar that dimethyl amine is the stronger base followed by methyl amine and followed by trimethyl amine how can we explain the basic nature of amines? Amine is nothing but NH2 functional group. So which is containing lone pair of electrons. 
structure. Then when the ease of electron releasing is more, when it is attached with an n number of electron releasing groups, the number of electron releasing groups, greater will be the ease to release the electron. That is nothing but basic nature, right? So in accordance with uh, that statement, trimethyl amine should become more basic, right? Because three methyl groups are releasing electrons so that amine becomes more basic. But uh, in general, in sense, we can say trimethyl amine is the least basic one when compared to dimethyl and methyl. What could be the reason for this one? When we are taking dimethyl amine, CH3 whole taken twice can be taken here. CH3 taken twice. NH will be the greater when compared to CH3, NH2 followed by least is given for CH3 taken thrice N, taken thrice N, right? So in general, methyl being an electron releasing, it will facilitate electron density and the nitrogen and that should become more basic. But trimethylamine is not becoming a strong base. The reason is three methyl groups when present around the nitrogen, being nitrogen is smaller. So when three methyl groups are present, they used to cover the entire region whichever present around the nitrogen. So that re release of electrons is not that easy. That's the reason why here the basic nature is least because of steric hindrance of all methyl groups, which are, which are occupying the entire space around the nitrogen. So ease of releasing electrons is somewhat less. That's the reason why dimethylamine is more basic followed by methyl and the least is given for trimethylamine. Right. This is purely explained based on plesi affecting nature of the surrounding alkyl groups. So in the manner, rate of elution also present because just now we discussed that basicity directly proportional to rate of elution. So that in the same order, rate of elution will be carried secondary followed by primary and the least is given for tertiary. So that order is secondary is given by B compound. Primary is given as a C compound, tertiary is given as a A compound. This will be the rate of elution that is provided in the option number one. For question number 93, option number one is the correct answer. Let us move on to question number 94. It is a part of spectroscopic analysis. For a complex A, deuteration of NH protons does not alter EPR spectrum. The number of hyperfine lines expected in EPR copper 63 is equal to 3 by 2 spec spectrum of A is. So EPR spectral lines to be depicted here. In this compound, what kind of spectrum should be uh, applied? EPR spectrum, we are going, we are not uh, affected by these hydrogens. If these hydrogens replaced with uh, deuterium atoms also, there is no change in the EPR spectral lines, they are not uh, impacting, right? So in that case, in that case, let us apply the formula to Ni plus 1 for nitrogen because nitrogen and copper both are EPR active. Nitrogen and copper both are EPR active. That's why let us apply for copper. Angular momentum number of uh, copper is 3 by 2. For nitrogen, it will be 1. So let us apply for these two. Nitrogen 2 Ni plus 1 formula. How many nitrogens are there? Within the complex, we have two nitrogen atoms, right? So 2 into 2 into I value for nitrogen is 1, right? 2 into 2 into 1 plus 1. So 2 Ni plus 1 can be employed. 2 into 2 plus 1, it will be 5. The possible spectral lines for nitrogen are 5 by applying the formula 2 Ni plus 1. Let us apply the same formula for copper. So 2 Ni plus 1 is applied for copper. How many copper atoms are there? Only 1. 2 into 1 into its angular momentum is 3 by 2. 2 into 1 into 3 by 2 plus 1. 2 to get cancelled 1 plus 1, it will be 2. Sorry. 1 into 3, it will be 3. 3 plus 1, it will be 4. So, 4 spectral lines are pos possible for copper. So, let us take the entire spectral lines. The product of these two, 5 into 4, it will be 20. So, total possible spectral lines for the given copper complex will be 20, right? So, for this question number 94, option number 1 is the correct answer. Let us move on to question number 95. The number of triangular faces in the square antiprism, icosahedral and the tricapital trigonal prism capped on square faces respectively are, okay? So, here, let us repeat the question. 
what we have to depict triangular faces are required how many triangles are there within the given compound we have to predict in what compounds three compounds are given one is square antiprism a cosahedron tricapped trigonal prism these three compounds are given in these three compounds how many triangular faces are there we have to predict so let us see the structure of the square antiprism this is the structure of square antiprism if we see the structure this is considered as one triangle so let us start from this here one triangle is there this is a second triangle third triangle and this is a fourth triangle how many are visible to us one two three four and this is a square right so this is a square face we can't say it is a triangle so here four triangles are visible in the same way back side also you can find the four triangles four are towards the vr four is uh, four are away from the vr so four plus four they will become eight eight triangular faces are available for the square antiprism right first compound is associated with eight triangular faces now let us see second structure what is that icosahedron icosahedron is represented here right so in this how many triangles you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 So ten phases, ten triangular phases are viewed towards the VR in the same manner. Similar ten will be there backside of this icosahedron structure. Ten are towards the VR, ten are away from the VR. Total number of triangular phases will be twenty. Ten are visible to us. Ten are exactly located backside of this structure. So twenty triangular phases are available for this compound. Now let us move on to third compound called a tricapital triangular prism. This is the structure of tricapital triangular prism. Let us count how many triangles are there: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So total number of total number of triangles within the structure will be fourteen. Forty triangles are available in this tricapital trigonal prism structure. so that it is very clear that square antiprism pertaining eight icosahedron 20 tricapital trigonal prism is associated with 14 8 20 14 are given in the option number 1 for question number 95 option number 1 is the correct answer let us move on to question number 96 uh, it is a part of again spectroscopic analysis f19 in a mass spectrum of the given compound we have to predict number of lines in the f19 in a mass spectrum of cf2 br cbr cl2 eta minus 120 degree centigrade assuming the mixture of static conformations are given below these are the possible static conformations how many f19 in a mass spectral lines are available for this compound F19 active molecules, active uh, functional groups are fluorines only. With respect to fluorine, we have to depict which are equivalent, which are non-equivalent. How many peaks are possible, right? So let us go with first compound. In the first compound, you can clearly see both the bromo groups are uh, anti to each other. These two chloro groups are present in the Gaussian positions. So uh, the entire molecule is said to be staggered. All three molecules are staggered only, right? so but this is the anti staggered conformation with respect to bromo right so when we are seeing this molecule here you can clearly observe this fluoro one side bromo in either side chloro this fluoro one side chloro in either side bromo so both the chlorine having equal environment hence we can say both the fluorines are identical in nature both the fluorines are identical considered as one set for one set we will get one signal right so that's why here for this compound how many signals you can expect only one signal being both the fluorines are identical and let us move on to second compound in this bromo are adjacent here chloro or gaseous in nature let us see around this chloro one side bromo in either side chloro but this chloro having one side chloro second side also chloro so environment around these two chloro groups are entirely different we can't say both are identical both are individual that's the reason why both the chloro are considered as two sets and pertaining two peaks for this compound in third compound when we observe this fluoro is associated with chloro chloro this fluoro associated with chloro bromo so again you can say environment is different set of two fluoro groups are different and subsequently their number of peaks will be two 
first compound only one second compound two peaks third compound two peaks how many possible peaks now total they are able to give five peaks in the f19 nmr spectrum right so five peaks are provided in option number 4 for question number 96 option number 4 is the correct answer let us move on to question number 97 it is a part of organic chemistry the correct statement for the reactants a b to give rise to product c d a b get uh, mixed and uh, treated with water and there is a possibility of product c and d so what are the correct answers we have to predict right let us see when compound a subjected to reaction compound b also subjected to reaction both are able to give one intermediate compound one uh, in between compound is generated whenever compound a so because of lone pair of electrons present in the oxygen will be bonded to this carbon atom because so3 ph being it is a better electron better leaving group so that there is a possibility of cyclization when it gets cyclized there is a possibility of five membered ring and oxygen containing methyl oxygen containing methyl and here also you can find one one more methyl in the side chain one more methyl in the side chain so this is the uh, electrons got participated in ring cyclization so that oxygen converted into oxonium loss of electrons positive charge is indicated in the similar manner whenever these electrons present on the oxygen on the side chain this is said to be a methoxy right so the electrons present on the methoxy will participate in the cyclization with this carbon because already this so3 ph is the better leaving group so we will get again same intermediate compound this intermediate within the problem what they mentioned they are treating with water right so whenever treated water there is a possibility of attachment of water towards this carbon otherwise towards this carbon being oxygen positive is a planar it used to generate it used to generate uh, what both the possible attachments of water molecule in the right side as well as left side in the equal probability equal probability is there when it is attached from the left uh, sorry what we can say right hand side it is said to be give it said uh, it used to give compound number d whenever it is attached from the back end so that we will get the compound number c as the final product then based on this what we can observe a and b give identical amount of c and d because equal probability of water attachment from front and back being it is a planar oxonium ion right so that we will get mixture of two products by combining a b so for question number 97 option number 3 is the correct answer let us move on to question number 98 we are taking pyridine ring side chain we have oxygen ch2 oxygen ch3 the major product to formed in the following reaction is so this pyridine compound was treated with tertiary butyl lithium alkyl lithium compound it is a strong base now it is attached with i ch2 ch2 cl right so these two are the reagents provided then what will be the product it is very clear that halogenation reaction carried in this first we have to generate the carbon subsequently iodo group being it is a better leaving group when compared with the chloro that's the reason why iodo will be selectively attached rather than chloro then let us see what is the suitable product in case of this uh, pyridine ring it is treated with a strong base tertiary butyl lithium when tertiary butyl lithium is added with respect to nitrogen this para position will be more favorable for the attachment of the lithium because from this para position uh, hydrogen will be easily eliminated so that we will get carbene now it will be attached with lithium counter balanced by lithium we will get four lithium substituted product after this we are going to treat with the al uh, what alkyl halide we can say it is a alkyl halide right already here we have carbene right so already here carbene ion is there carbene will not bind with carbo uh, carbene will not uh, uh, bind with this alkyl group because iodo group is coming out and uh, that iodo will be attached here so lithium will be replaced and iodo group iodonium iodo group will be added here so that iodo substituted compound will be generated why not chloro why iodo because iodo is a better leaving group when compared to chloro so that iodo will be substituted at this fourth position because fourth position is favorable for this uh, uh, for this uh, compound formation 
right so that's the reason why four iodo product that is provided in option number 3 for question number 98 option number 3 is the correct answer let us move on to next question 99 the major product formed in the following reaction this is called benzaldehyde benzaldehyde is treated with a five membered ring with a sulfur nitrogen sulfur nitrogen in five membered is called a thiazol right so this is called a thiazolium iodide it is in salt form and one more reagent that is strong base sodium methoxide is added one more uh, reagent called a purpural so furan with aldehyde second position is called purpural this purpural is also added so it's very clear that there is a possibility of benzoin type of condensation both aldehydes get combined and benzoin type of condensation get carried and we will get uh, the product just resembles benzoin that is given in the option number 2 let us see what is the actual mechanism involved in this benzaldehyde was taken and treated with thiazol thiazolium iodide and upon treating with sodium methoxide the sodium methoxide will be added what is the purpose of sodium methoxide sodium methoxide will be the strong base that strong base used to generate the carbene ion in between sulfur and nitrogen because whatever the carbon which is attached with electron withdrawing groups always that becomes a active methylene and from which you can easily remove hydrogen and that generates carbene this carbene generated will be attached to carbonylic center of this aldehyde so that we will get the uh, nucleophilic addition product this is called a nucleophilic addition product further what we are doing uh, methoxide one more sodium methoxide that means strong base will be added that base will again pull one of the hydrogen from the center so that again carbene will be generated that hydrogen released again attached to o minus and it turned into oh hydroxy group generated at this position and we got carbene we got carbene now it is treated with it is treated with purpural so this there should be a ring structure right so purpural is nothing but furan ring five membered furan ring with uh, aldehyde group at second position is said to be purpural when that purpural is added to this compound what will be the product let us see so this is called purpural and added to this one here we already got negative charge right this will be attached to the carbonylic center of aldehyde functional group this negative charge will attach to the carbonylic center of aldehyde functional group now we turned into o minus oxide will be generated here also oxide will be generated so what happens further we are going to back polarize this negative charge toward the side and uh, here this entire group whatever present that is called thiazolium thiazolium salt whichever present at this position that will be better discarded because here back polarization being it is a better leaving group it will be discarded so that we will get carbon oxygen double bond and uh, one more ch2 group is there and oh group is there at the adjacent position this oh why o minus converted into oh because we are treating with oxonium ion right hydronium sorry hydronium ion will be added so that it release h plus and it turned into oh this is called water bark up right so finally we got the product we got the product that is a benzene ring double bond of oh and here furan ring will be there this is a kind of benzoin condensation right so that is provided in the option number 2 what you have to do first we are taking this benzaldehyde treated with this um, thiazolium salt in the presence of sodium methoxide it used to generate the carbene that carbene attached to aldehyde and uh, subsequently it uh, got protonated at that oxygen and we generated carbene at this position and that carbene binds to this uh, furan aldehyde compound so again nucleophilic attack at the carbonylic center is possible so upon this uh, reaction upon this reaction what happens we will get o minus o minus and the adjacent carbon atoms two oxides and the adjacent carbon highly sterically hindered what we can say they get uh, compensate because uh, oxygen negative charge will be back polarized this uh, thiazol unit will be discarded and we will get we will get 
the product containing double bond wo oh this furan that is given in the option number 2 for question number 99 option number 2 is the correct answer let us move on to last question of the series that is uh, question number 100 again it is a part of spectroscopic analysis the compound that exhibit following spectral data proton enamel data is delta value 8 uh, doublet j values 12.3 hs and uh, this is pertaining one hydrogen right eight with one hydrogen it is most obvious that either ketonic uh, hydrogen with adjacent ketonic functional group or vinylic carbon will be there 7.7 .7 doublet j value 8.0 hs two hydrogen this denotes what aromatic hydrogens 6.8 doublet j is equal to 8 hs and two hydrogens again it is a part of aromatic system 7.7, 6.8 denotes aromatic system hydrogen. That is nothing but para substituted compound. If only two kind of two set of hydro, two set of aromatic hydrogens are there, we can clearly assume that the compound is para substituted. 5.8 doublet J is equal to 12.3 one hydrogen. One hydrogen, this is we have to predict. And 3.8 singlet three hydrogens, it is very clear that 3.8 is a characteristic peak for methoxy. Three hydrogen singlet six hydrogens denotes these are the part of uh, CH3 CH3 of equivalent nature. So, three uh, value is three singlet, it will be six hydrogens are nothing but most probably it is a kind of secondary amine, right? So, let us see where all these. Uh, are uh, exactly matching. So in option number three and four, we have a secondary amine functional group. There is a possibility. And in both the compounds, we have methoxy also. So methoxy characteristic peak is visible and uh, secondary amine dimethyl identical uh, six hydrogens also visible. What is the main uh, difference between these two here? Carbonyl group is attached to the benzene. Here vinyl group is attached to the benzene, which is the correct one we have to predict. Right. So for that purpose, here is the data where already we know that uh, aromatic protons are of two types. One is 6.8. These two protons pertaining 6.8 ppm value and 7.7. .7, these two hydrogens pertaining 7.7. .7. These uh, two peaks indicates what definitely it will be the para substituted compound. Then only two set of hydrogens are available. If we go with meta, three different sets will be there. If we go with ardo more number of the set of hydrogens will be there. Only para substitution will give two set of aromatic hydrogens. Now methoxy, what will be the peak ratio of methoxy? 3.8 ppm. When we go with vinylic, vinylic here, 8 ppm denotes a vinylic hydrogen and that should be the adjacent to nitrogen. So vinylic hydrogen adjacent to carbonyl, that will give the peak at 5.8. So these characteristic peaks are visible only in the compound number compound number three rather than four. In four compound, we will get a benzene ring and a ketonic group. That is not a correct suitable shielding, deshielding effect, right? And this nitrogen, being it is a tertiary amine, here we have terminal two methyl groups. Both are identical in nature and both are able to give the uh, peak region uh, nearby three ppm. So bo being both are identical, both are giving only singlet peak at uh, three ppm and uh, corresponding six hydrogens will be there. This will be the actual structure that is given in only in the option number three. So uh, when we see option number one, are the substitution, are the substitution, these two hydrogens are uh, different. These two hydrogens also different. So that uh, here in the aromatic nature only, we can clearly discard this one. Here also we have a meta substitution. So we can clearly discard. There is an ambiguity between option number three and four only because both are having uh, N and dimethyl, both are having methoxy. Only the thing we have to clarify is whether it will be ketonic group attached to benzene or olefinic group attached to benzene. It is very clear that 5.8 near to carbonyl and 8 point something that near to the tertiary amine. So that option number three is the correct answer for question number 100. By this, we completed the series number three. Thank you very much for your patience listening. Thank you one and all.